You guys ever seen like rare books or rare things, things that are hard to get, you find it at an old bookstore and it feels good and it smells good and the pages smell old and weathered. You just think like, man, this thing has been around. It's been around the block. I wonder how old it is. And this particular book, this is a rare book. This is hard to find. Like this is a hot commodity right now. You can't find it on the shelves. It costs more than it should. People are hoarding these books uh, because of the contents inside. It's very, um, it's, it's a hard thing to find right now. Hot commodity, as they say. And uh, it's destroying my skin because I'm using quite a little bit of it. But you know, if you ever find one of those books on the shelf, just <laughs> grab it. You'll be happy you did. Let's begin. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video. I hope you are having a great day no matter where you are in the world. So let's kick back and relax for the next 10 minutes or so. I asked you guys on Twitter last night to fire some questions at me and ask me anything, an AMA. A few people were like, what's AMA? Now you know. I haven't done one in a long time and there's just been a lot of stuff piling up over the, over the past few months with me, with photography, with the industry, with the world. So, let's start, I'm gonna go through my phone. Let's put a timer on the clock. Actually, we don't need a timer because we all know how I do with timers. Let's just start. Oh, wait, 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 hey, hold it, hold, stop, pause, music off. Let's get some upbeat music going. Let's get the energy going, let's make people feel good. No, give me something else. No, no, ugh. Absolutely not. Oh, yes, that, okay. Raise the decibel slightly. Right there, okay, now we're ready. That's gonna be a nightmare for you, <laughs> but it'll be cool. Dean Jackson says, what show will you binge if you get quarantined? Well, I will be binging my friend Dennis the Prescott's new show on Netflix called Restaurants on the Edge. That sounded like an ad, but it wasn't at all. One of my best friends is literally has his own Netflix show now, which is called Restaurants on the Edge, and they go around and fix restaurants and make food, and it's Dennis. I love Dennis, so I'm obviously gonna binge that show first. And then moving from there, I gotta finish Narcos, because I'm only like three episodes into like the new Mexico season, gotta finish that. And then I got a couple, couple SEAL Team episodes up my sleeve that I'm psyched for. That show is so good. How is it not more popular? SEAL Team, let's go, David Boreanaz? I need to get on that set. If anyone knows anyone that can get me on that set of SEAL Team, when travel is more acceptable, let me know. I'm coming. Next up, we have Simon Green says, how are you and your family with the global and local situation? We're good. We're taking precautions. We're keeping our hands clean. We're staying mostly at home. We're not going anywhere outside of needing groceries or pharmaceutical needs. So uh, yeah, we're kind of just self-quarantining ourselves, not because we're sick, but just because it's responsible and gonna try and do my part to stop this madness so that we can all get back to enjoying 2020 the way we should be, watching videos online. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, yeah, we're just hanging out, doing fun things, watching Netflix shows, doing some leather craft, just uh, chilling. What else is there to do? Learning Spanish. Ramilla says, could you gift us with some words in Spanish? Okay. Um, Aprendi Espanol, para mi esposa, quien quiero mucho. Thank you for your question. James Robinson Golf says, uh, what's your favorite video ever, minus the bucket shot? That's hard because that's probably it. The Mountains Won't Remember Me right now is probably my favorite video that we've ever made. I also love the Ice Hotel video that I did with Maddie like two years ago called Sleeping in a Minus 10 Degrees Celsius Ice Hotel. And recently that kind of video like must have fallen into some weird magical algorithm because it just blew up recently and I'm psyched on that. But it was one of my favorites and it was one of the first videos that I introduced some comedy into it, which is what I, I love. I'd love to do more comedy shorts and stuff like that this year, but it was kind of like the first taste of that on my channel. Nick Skirpan says, favorite snack when off the beaten path. That would be an obvious Sour Patch Kids. The biggest, gnarliest bag of Sour Patch Kids you could possibly find, and I will destroy the entire bag faster than it makes anyone comfortable. Yasil Valdez says, hi Peter, love your work. I'm a photographer from Mexico and I wanted to know how much has your work been affected by what's happening right now and the pandemic, etc." cetera. Um, not a whole lot, I don't think, but that's that could change. We don't know what's gonna happen moving into the future, but I'm just trying to stay optimistic, stay positive, keep my head down, abide by the local guidelines on what I should be doing and uh, just carrying on 
carrying on. Just making vids, snapping photos, trying to come up with new things I can be creative with, figure out some new hobbies, hone, polish some other hobbies. But uh, that's kind of just like everyday life for me anyway. So doing my part to stay safe and everyone else should as well. And that's it. So I, I guess you could say I'm, I'm coping just fine for the time being. Lila from YouTube. Lila says, if after all this time, this is a good one, if Ford finally offered you a brand deal, would you still take it? Whew. That's a hard one. It's actually a hard question to answer. Um, for those of you who thought I was sponsored by Ford because I wore a Ford hat, false. I made that hat. I'm just a big fan of Ford trucks. I like a lot of trucks. I'm just a big fan of pickup trucks, minus the Tacoma. But <laughs> I drive a Raptor. I paid full price for it. Ford did not give it to me. I'm not sponsored by them at all. The joke kind of turned out to just become like sponsor Peter and everyone was posting it and it was just kind of funny. And we've actually met with Ford and we've gone to their plant in Detroit and, and had discussions with them. But honestly, I think at this point, no, probably not. I'm good. Maybe they let me do something crazy, like build a helipad on the back of an F-250 and Brad Friesen could land his helicopter as we drove through the mountains and embarked onto a ferry, which then disengaged into the ocean. And it was this crazy contraption of the helicopter on the, onto the boat, earth, land, water, fire, sea, hopefully not fire. <laughs> I don't know. Angels and Airwaves Movement at the Ava Movement says, I know these guys. Hey Pete. How's the Angels and Airwaves documentary coming along? Are you visiting the band in the studio or editing footage from the tour? Keep up the rad work. Angels fans love you. Well, I love you too. Thanks for all the work you do. I'm sure the fans appreciate your efforts. I've been talking, I've been texting with Tom and all the guys for the last few months and we, we chat often. Right now we're working on the tour footage and a lot of the stuff that we shot before the tour because I started this documentary long before they started playing live. Unfortunately, right now, all the plans we had to meet up and continue shooting and continue recording sessions in studio, those types of things have been just temporarily postponed until obviously things clear up that we can get back to uh, regular activities working on this documentary. I will say with kind of being home and gonna be spending more time at home, I will be working more and more on this project. So expect to probably see more updates and things dropped on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm sure Tom will post lots of random clips that I end up texting him because that's just what he seems to do. He also bought a new Ford. McNeil Photography says, poached eggs are scrambled. <laughs> poached all day long, bro. Poach them eggs for sure. Martin says, hi. Hi. Do you see any realistic future for Canon's EF-M mount? As a relatively recent buyer of an EOS M10, I'm wondering if I've backed the right horse. I'm really not sure to, to be honest. I, I don't really know any of their plans with regards to anything for the most part. I do know that they're going hard on the RF mounts and the RF glass, and that's going to be what seems like replacing a lot of the EF glass as we move further and further into the future, just like they did back in the day. Just like back in the day when we went from FD mounts into EF mounts and everyone was like, what's happening? This is kind of what I feel is like the same evolution, the natural evolution of what Canon's doing with their product line. So it's exciting stuff because the new RF lenses are great, but unfortunately I don't really know anything with regards to those EOS M mounts. Jacob Shelton says, why haven't you switched to Sony yet? How does Canon respond to these awesome cameras Sony is putting out coming from an avid Canon user? I have one answer for you, R5. Victoria says, how do you manage to keep consistent social media presence when it comes to showcasing your photography? I always lose the motivation to keep posting and I also lose motivation to keep posting. Sometimes there's just nothing to post. I haven't been out shooting like a normal photographer for quite a while because my life is on social media. It's my job to keep posting, but that's also just kind of um, sparked a challenge inside me. How can I keep it going? How can I keep matching the colors, the grid, the tones? How can I keep posting even if I don't feel like it, even if I've got no motivation, even if I haven't been able to get out to actually create new content. And for me, that actually drives me. I like the challenge. I appreciate the uh, the hard work that goes into it because it's not easy to uphold this brand that I've created online. And if I was to say to you, how do you regain that motivation to keep going? I think it's probably time for you to take a little bit of a break so that you don't have to try and force yourself to if it's not your career. Otherwise, just have fun with it. Try to remember why you like doing what you like doing. Photograph the things that you like. That'll give you motivation to keep posting. Andre says, what's your next favorite thing to photograph after landscapes? Mm, probably products, to be honest. I've just loved product photography, still life photography, stuff like that. Being able to set up a scene, make something unique with uh, accessories and backgrounds and textures, those things, as you can see from all the product videos that we've done, I love that style. Matt W says, how did you come up with Squarespace Pete? 
uh, for those of you that don't know it, that I created the kind of like a character to read ads. And how I came up with it was just wanting a way to make working with these brands a little more unique, just like they're all in one platform. With squarespace.com slash McKinnon, you can save 10% off your first purchase by using code McKinnon at checkout. Now, why would you do that? Because you need a website. If you're an individual, if you're a human being, an entrepreneur, a creative, someone that just likes to make things, you need to put that on the internet, okay? So what are you gonna buy today? Toilet paper? <laughs> no. You're gonna buy hand sanitizer? No, you're gonna buy a domain. You're gonna buy a domain name and you're gonna start that business today while you're self-isolating. You've got great customer service 24 seven. You can sell things, you can make things. Award-winning templates, constantly refreshed, like fresh air, fresh water, okay? You're not gonna feel like you're stuck in the 90s or the mid 2000s, you're up to date. I'm waiting for you. You should be opening a new tab right now. Open it, open it. Open the tap. There you go. Feels good. Feels right. Squarespace.com slash McKinnon. All right. And that's how I made the uh, character for Squarespace P. Just try to make him a different uh, people look forward to seeing it, you know, stuff like that. Thanks for your question. Moving on to the next one. Christian Flores says, how did you and your wife meet? Tell us the story. Well, that's a long story. That's probably a video in and of itself. Might have been 13 years ago now. We've almost been married for 10 years, but I met her working at Best Buy. I was in the camera department and I met her on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas when all the staff is there working and I was put at a counter to sell warranties to all the customers that were coming through to buy laptops. Even though I was in the camera department, I was good at it. They positioned her at the cash register to just deal all the, the cash so as it was coming in. So we were kind of like a little team for that whole day and the rest is history. Shalako says, what's in your pockets? Never thought you'd ask, but I am packing light today. So I've made a lot of changes. I don't carry keys anymore. Stop carrying keys because keys suck. They chat me big time. I hate it. Pocket knife, what do we got? I collect pocket knives and I've got a lot of them that were gifted to me, but I always come back to the Chris Reeve Sebenza. This is the Sebenza 31 titanium frame lock. It's super solid, looks amazing. And uh, I've been using this one for a couple months now, a solid, solid, solid knife. So on this side is a wallet that I bought at an airport when I was traveling to Norway. It is a fun little Mont Blanc wallet. I remember seeing a magician use one of these back in the day when I was sitting at a restaurant. He took out his wallet, it was a Mont Blanc wallet. I'm obsessed with wallets. This guy told me the history of this brand and why this logo is this way because it's supposed to represent the snow cap of the mountain. I love mountains. It reminds me of my past being a magician and so it's got some sentimental value to it. And it's a nice thin kind of card slip so it doesn't take up lots of room. So that's, that's literally, that is it right now. That's what's in my pockets. I wish I had more for you, but I appreciate you asking. Chime, Chim, Chime, Kim, this particular individual says, how do you know your edit is ready for YouTube? I usually spend hours perfecting everything and it drives me nuts. Do you still, and if so, how do you deal with this? I made a video a while back called Done is Better Than Perfect. It might not have been titled that, but that was the moral of the story because my sister told me that once years ago. The reality is you could continue to make updates to this video for years. You're always going to find something else, always. Even if you think it's perfect, you'll post it, then you'll find things. Or you're in the edit and you keep delaying the edit because it's not just perfect yet, but there does come a time of diminishing returns where it's more valuable and it makes more sense for you to post that than continue wasting time trying to reach perfection. You never will, nothing's perfect. So I would rather be done than have it be perfect because then I can put it out into the world, people can enjoy it, you can motivate and encourage people with that piece and get back to making something else that you love instead of just getting frustrated, spending too much time on one thing when it's ready to go. I'm not saying be lazy, put your hard work into it, but there needs to be a time where you just commit and full send, upload, move on. Nick Strode says, favorite brand of skinny jeans. All Saints cigarette jeans, those are my jam. The tighter, the better. I'm gonna switch to leggings. Just paint them on my legs. Christopher Shin says, what's your next tattoo? Next tattoo, I'd love to get a coffee bean slow dancing with a slice of pizza. 
JP says, what is the thing you are most excited for in 2020? Uh, this virus going away. Carlos Olvera says, are you planning to hire more people to help you create more stuff now that you have a bigger office? Yes, that's the plan. I'd like to expand the team, expand our reach, expand our creative potential, and work with more people that love what they do. Leslie Seto says, what's your favorite brew method? I like using the Kalita Wave. I've been using the Chemex for like ever, and that's still great, but the Kalita Wave, for whatever reason, I've just been very much addicted to as of late. Almost Famous says, bunker question, what do you rather give up? Drinking coffee, <laughs> fitting, forever, or using any type of camera or recording device capable to take photos? What would you choose? I would give up coffee, absolutely. Gone, see you later, don't care. Photos for life, bam. Taylor says, will we get another bucket shot? Taylor, yes. Yes, you will. Evan Stewart says, what's the current state of your watch collection? <whistles> Let's just say growing. Jayhawk, what's the next upgrade happening at the PMHQ office? I am just waiting for a few more pieces of furniture and then I'm gonna do an office tour and I'll let you see it for yourself. Rob Focht says, if you could take a portrait of anyone in their element, who would it be and why? Probably Kiefer Sutherland or Barack Obama. I've always loved Kiefer Sutherland. I just think he's super interesting. I love that he's Canadian. His family actually has quite a bit of Canadian heritage. They've done a lot for the country. He's just dope. He's Jack Bauer. He's amazing. And then Barack Obama, because he just looks like someone I want to hang with. And his photographer, Pete D'Souza, that followed him around for his entire presidency. A lot of those photos were super dope and I was inspired by looking at that work. Rare Bunny says, any plans on making an online course? Funny you should ask, yes. It's coming. David Paul says, what's the origin story of Pete's Pirate Life? If you don't know what Pete's Pirate Life is, it's another brand that I run. It's another Instagram account that I run that focuses on a lot of handmade goods, a lot of artisanal skill, stuff from my past, leather making, pirate style goods, photos. But I think I'm gonna do a video about Pete's Pirate Life eventually. I'll save the story for that. For now, you just get the Instagram account. Logan says, any plans on making a fiction film or anything that's not documentary style film? Yes, I would love to make a drama. I would love to make some pieces with rich dialogue, having two people interact, write a script, have someone direct it. Definitely the plan and a lot of comedy. I would love to do some comedy writing and do some skits and shorts, all things I have planned for the future. Brian Davidson says, time to buy another sled. Actually, I don't miss my sled at all. It's time to buy another quad because I miss that. But ultimately, I miss riding the ski and I'm done with winter. No more, get me in the water. Was this in frame the whole time? Game of Thrones. <laughs> Untitled Def says, would you like your daughter to get into photography and do you encourage that passion? I'm like, I don't, my daughter can get into whatever she wants to. If she shows an interest for photography and wants me to teach her, then I'd be psyched and totally happy to, but uh, she's her own little person and she's, she's gonna go her own little way and I fully support that. Meow Dad, you win the names on Twitter right now. <laughs> Did you ever think your career on YouTube would get so big? No, not at all. Literally zero chance, zero expectations. Did not start it for that reason whatsoever, it just happened and I'm super blessed and fortunate to be where I am now. But the answer is, is a resounding no. Josh Richter, what is your go-to coffee drink for editing? Call me bias, but that would have to be golden hour. It makes you a better editor makes you a better father, husband, cinematographer, photographer, it makes you better at all things, it makes you a better human, drinking golden hour coffee. Available at the link in description. But seriously, yeah, I drink golden hour or anything from James Coffee pretty much. Although James Hoffman just did send me some tasty stuff from his roaster called Square Mile. Currently enjoying this. Ooh, that smells good. That's almost all you need to do. James Hoffman sent me this stuff from Ecuador, which is amazing. Thank you, James Hoffman. I don't know why I need to call you by your full name, but it just sounds, it's fun to say. James Hoffman. Uh, James Hoffman actually did a review of Golden Hour. If you wanna check out his video, it was uh, very, uh, very non-biased. Tom Nye says, travel is awesome. How hard do you find it to be away from the kids? Do you have to make extra time when you're home? So uh, I have two kids and yeah, uh, as they get older and older, it gets harder and harder and harder to leave them. When they're young, they kind of don't really know what's happening at all. You're just gone and then you're back. But when they get older and they start to be like, you're going again or when are you coming back or I'm gonna miss you, then you start feeling like, I'm gonna just, I'm never traveling again, ever. 
And now I can be gone less time because I just miss them more and more and more. So I try to keep my travel days to, uh, to nothing beyond five to six days, the like max. I'll rarely be gone more than six days. All right, we got one from Leon Lush. What's up, Leon? You're the best, you're hilarious. And uh, let's go ahead and read your tweet. Have you ever shot f-stop 200 with rolling shutter ISO stabilization enabled? If so, did the frame rate need to be polarized? And then Marquez uh, bumped that up. Yes, I have. It requires just such an extreme fast rate of transfer. You actually have to glue two SD cards together. So one isn't enough to handle those data speeds. So you actually have to glue them together face to face, not back to back, face to face. And then you kind of have to, there's a little bit of a modification for your SD card slot. You just chisel out like one third of it in order to get this new fat Big Mac card in there, which can handle those speeds. And then once it's done, you have to take that card out and send it to a lab. Once you get it back from the lab, you're actually able to process that video on your computer, but you can only do so wearing infrared lenses. Um, so it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a... For anyone wondering, Leon's question, as well as my response, was sarcasm. We could all use a little humor right now. Prime before. Break into my house. Shove it into my mouth. <laughs> Place it into my hand. Guys, thank you so much for your questions. There were hundreds more. I wish I could answer more of them. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do more Q and A's like this. Um, if it's something that you're interested in, we definitely have tons of comments and more people that have asked incredible questions that we could get to. I just know already this video is going to be very long. We had to dump the card halfway through. That never happens. So. Thank you so much for submitting your questions on Twitter. If you don't follow me, at Peter McKinnon on Twitter, at Peter McKinnon on Instagram, at Pete's Pirate Life if you want to check out the other brand. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Stay safe, wash your hands, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and, and I will see you in the next video. The Original Owl Hat, signing off.